What's up, YouTube? So, I haven't put out a video in a while, obviously, because I'm busy. I'm trying, though. I really am. I have um, about two random motorcycle moments worth of clips saved up. I have all the clips picked out. I just haven't had time to do the editing, but I'll get to it. I just have four exams next week, so... Anywho, who cares about school, right? I figured I'd do something a little different this time and just start a night vlog session. This way I don't have to edit too much and I can pretty much, for the most part, just uh, put together clips of me talking, nothing fancy, no text, subtitles, anything like that. Just put that shit together and bam, there you go. I have not this Sunday, but the next Sunday off. And last Sunday was Super Bowl, and then this Sunday is the Sunday before I have four tests. But the next Sunday, and I'll put the little date down here because I, I don't know what the date is off the top of my head. Basically the Sunday after Valentine's Day, I think that'll be a good day to plan the ride. I don't think the weather is going to be too much of an issue. And on top of that, I've requested the day off work so I won't have to fucking do homework rush to the ride and then like rush home and go to work and then rush home and go to bed so that'll be nice something I kind of wanted to talk about is I've noticed that when you're a rider you tend to go through uh, cycles in your riding I guess you could call it uh, when I first got the bike like naturally I wanted to be like reckless I wanted to go as fast as I could and shit but I didn't have a good understanding like a complete understanding of the bike granted because I was new so most of my shit just involved like straight line speed and stuff like that because I really just wasn't comfortable with the controls and then obviously as you progress as a rider you get better you get more miles underneath your belt you've almost died a lot more times and you've hopefully learned something along the way but sometimes you learn things and you know better but you still do them and it's it's okay not everyone's perfect like it's not the best thing but there's just certain situations where you start to understand your role as a motorcyclist and I think really the best way to sum it up is it doesn't matter if you're right if you're dead so there's often times when you're a motorcyclist where you're not in the wrong at all where you're just proceeding in a straight line maybe you're speeding maybe you're not and you know, someone takes the ride away from you, that shit's just gonna happen. And it's not gonna happen to you as much as it happens in cars, obviously, so... But as you become a better rider, your skills tend to get a lot better, and you tend to become more comfortable with riding aggressively. At least, at least certainly in my case, for example. And while that's cool and everything, it's certainly not the best thing, because sometimes you put yourself in situations that you really don't need to be in simply because you have a good grasp of how to handle your bike. So there's going to be some clips in the Random Motorcycle Moments video where technically I was right, technically the other drivers were not following the rules, but still it, it, at the end of the day it doesn't matter who's right if you're the one that's going to really, obviously if you get in an accident with a car, you're probably going to end up in worse condition than the car or the driver. So it's not really, it's not really risk you should go out of your way to take. And I know it's kind of hypocritical coming from me because a lot of times I take like really unnecessary risks, probably just for the adrenaline of it, but that's just me personally. But as you grow older and as you become a more versed rider, you start to notice little, little themes in your riding pop up. I think one thing that's on the back of everyone's mind is riding a motorcycle is inherently dangerous. You run the risk of dying a lot more than non-motorcycle riders. Like death is almost a normal part of the life or I guess the proximity in which you come to and the frequency that you come to close calls are a lot more than someone in a car. Regardless of whether you ride aggressive or not, it still, it still happens to you. Obviously there's 
There's things you can do to minimize risk and there's factors that pit your risk based on your riding style. But the problem with becoming a better rider is you become more comfortable. And in becoming more comfortable, you're, you're, it's almost like, like natural selection or Darwinism. Like if you survive the first round of crashes, like good for you. You survive the second round of like close calls, you probably learned something from the first round and vice versa. So the more close calls you have, the more you miss is almost like a, a writing dictionary that you start to develop. What the fuck is this idiot doing? Wow. <laughs> wow, people are so fucking retarded. She tried to turn and merge into a left turn lane from the straight lane. I don't even think with a blinker, I could be wrong. Fuck. And it's a perfect example right there. That shit just happens. And so when you start to see things happen, you start to develop like a writer's dictionary of sorts where it's almost like a loose collection of all the close calls. You start to recognize all the situations that have resulted in a close call. And you start to recognize certain factors of yours like speed, lane splitting, riding style, time of day, even when you're riding at 5 o'clock or 5.30 p.m. in the afternoon. It's 15 more times dangerous, I think, than any other time at night. Simply because people are on the way home, they've had a long day at work, presumably, and they're irritated, and there's a lot of traffic, and they're cagers, and so it's just a bad formula. So you have people making sudden lane changes without even any look at all to either mirror, either behind them or to their left, or a shoulders check. And for fucking Christ's sake, they're always on the phone too. But it's just things you start to notice and it's okay because this is kind of the social contract you signed up for by getting a motorcycle. So if you just bitch about it and it ruins your experience, then there's really no point to riding because you can't let things like that kind of detriment the overall experience. What the fuck is going on behind me? These guys are driving crazy. You start to recognize bad drivers. Bad drivers give off a body language. You can see an idiot from a mile away. They don't hide it well. But there's times when you recognize when is there going to be something that catches me off guard and that I'm not prepared for and hopefully you're always prepared for it and hopefully God forbid you ever have to face that situation but as a motorcyclist and especially as a daily motorcyclist like myself it's something you think about every day and when you go without a close call it, it's, it sucks because you know one's going to happen eventually they happen a lot but it was getting to the point where, you know, I'd ride aggressively, but most of my commuting is on Herndon, and it's almost always green, and there's three lanes, and it's the fastest, I guess, city speed limit in Fresno, so it's just a natural choice for me. It's actually a fun road to ride, too, because when traffic gets backed up like this, as you've seen in previous videos of mine, both east and west, there really is no traffic for you. There's just traffic for everyone else. If you go a long period, without having a close call and you suddenly have one in a strange way it's kind of refreshing because it kind of reminds you that you're fragile and if you get out of it it reminds you how lucky you are to get out of it because there's so many times where shit's gone wrong for half a second and you know one or more people die because of it off of just a, a poorly made decision whether it was just ill-advised or just just poor driving or or just low visibility or just you know there's even things that you as a rider could do better to prevent yourself from putting yourself in those situations, yet you're probably not doing it. So even though it's not your fault, it is your fault you didn't prepare better. And you know, shit happens. Sometimes life throws curveballs at you, as you know. So I, I don't want to be morose here, but I can't, I can't help but wonder sometimes just how fucking lucky I am to ride the way I do and as frequently as I do to have made it as far as I have. And fucking downshift four times at 15 miles an hour. And you know, I'm doing good. Like for the most part, I haven't had anything that's majorly life-threatening, just just being cut off. But for the most part, it's never really come close to being an accident. Uh, granted, in these next videos I'm going to make, I don't know if they'll get released before or after this. Hopefully after. I'll show you situations where I actually thought I was going to hit a car and that the moment was finally happening. Jesus Christ, people. Another thing that I'm kind of doing and shouldn't be doing is never ride in the fucking right lane for this exact goddamn reason. 
this person, I'm going just over the speed limit and this person is going to pull out and be doing about 15 miles an hour slower than me and never really reach the speed that I'm going. And it's normal, you know? They're always going to do it and you kind of have to expect it. doesn't matter who's wrong. They'll still do it if I'm not speeding. It's just one of those things that just kind of comes with the territory. But I guess lately, just the frequency of close calls I've had, it, it doesn't have me fucking questioning anything. I'm not going to have the bike on Craigslist tomorrow or anything like that, but it's just a little wake-up call. Every now and then you need to be reminded that you're not invincible, you know? I don't think I am, but I certainly ride confidently.